What's up YouTube? Conzilla here. This is day 11 of 31 Days of Horror, where I'm reviewing a different horror movie for every day of the month of October. Tonight's film was Ringu, directed by Hideo Nakata. This is uh, the Japanese counterpart to the uh, well-known horror film The Ring. Uh, obviously Ringu came first. It's based on a novel by uh, Koji Suzuki, I believe. Um, a little background about this film for me. Um, the American version of The Ring was my first uh, theatrical horror experience. My older brother and I rode our bikes to the theater to watch that movie, and uh, I had a. It was a, left a very strong impression on me, to say uh, the least. Uh, definitely a movie I really enjoyed when I was younger. I still really enjoy it. Um, I've read the novel. Thought that was good as well. I have seen Ringu once before when I was a kid, but this is my first viewing in a really long time, and I definitely felt like I was going into this viewing pretty blind. Like, you know, basically my first viewing. I didn't really remember much of it. Um, so yeah, this is a story that uh, people are pretty familiar with by now. Uh, the basic premise, uh, four high school kids uh, go off to a cabin uh, to stay the night, and while they're there they wind up uh, videotaping, uh, a cursed, cursed videotape, basically. They wind up watching a cursed videotape. And then, uh, they, the film actually starts seven days later with a character named, uh, Tomoko. And, uh, she was one of the people who watched the, the tape. And, uh, it's, it's seven days later. Uh, most people are pretty familiar with the, you know, seven days motif of this film. And so she winds up, uh, mysteriously dying. Tomoko's aunt Asakawa is a, uh, a journalist and uh, while she's at her uh, niece's funeral she's talking to some of the kids and she hears them talking about the cursed videotape which kills you seven days after you watch it. She would already been doing like a little news segment on rumors about this tape so uh, I think that strikes her as a little bit odd and they mentioned to her that some other kids had died as well and so she's looking into that, finds a videotape of a, you know, a guy and a girl who had died in their car, uh, which is a nice little scene. You get sort of that, you know, creepy, distorted facial thing happening that we see when someone dies from the tape. Uh, anyways, she winds up tracking down the, uh, the cabin that they stayed at in Izu, and uh, just so happens to find that videotape. And uh, she watches it for herself, and obviously what she finds on the tape is, you know, kind of a creepy, just a creepy little 30-second segment. Uh, has some bizarre imagery in it. And after that, the phone rings. And uh, it, interestingly, when she answers the phone, we don't hear the, you know, seven days thing that we're all so familiar with. We just hear, like, this sound of, like, a metallic scraping sort of a sound. Um, there's a really great shot after that where she's looking in the TV and in the reflection she can see uh, Sonico, the the girl from the tape, and uh, turns around and she's gone. But it's a super pretty, pretty effective little uh, sequence there. Uh, anyways, from there on she calls her ex-husband Ryuji and uh, wants to have him help her figure out what's going on with this tape. So of course he watches a copy of it. Um, and now Ryuji is uh, a character with ESP. He has some some sort of psychic ability they touch briefly on throughout the film. And uh, basically they figure out, you know, they begin to unravel the mystery behind this tape. They travel to uh, Mount Mahara, which, uh, you know, they find out that there was a woman, a psychic woman, who had predicted that Mount Mahara would erupt. And uh, we later find out in the film that woman is Sonico's mother. And uh, sh she um, was a woman who had some extrasensory perception abilities. And uh, there was a doctor who was trying to prove that ESP exists by, by using her and was kind of trying to show off her abilities to prove that she was psychic. We see this all in a flashback sequence, sort of like a psychic flashback, uh, because uh, they, they travel to the island that Mount Mihara is on, and uh, he, that Ryuji character is like touching the, uh, I guess, I think it would have been Sonico's grandfather. He grabs him by the hand, and he has this sort of psychic flashback, and we see this scene. 
and uh, there's somebody in the audience that when they're trying to show off her her ESP abilities, and he says, "No, you know, you're a fraud," and then he suddenly dies, and uh, we find out that Sonico basically willed him to death because Sonico has psychic powers as well. And then, of course, what we find out is uh, the Doctor uh, Zumi, I think, character or Izuki, um, he, he actually winds up murdering Sadako, pushing her into a well, and, uh, closing the top on it. And then we find out, of course, uh, the well that she was pushed into is underneath the cabin that those teenagers had stayed at. And so, they travel back to the cabin, dig up the well, uncover it, go inside, try to scoop all the water out so they can find... Sadako's remains, the idea being that they'll be able to break the curse that way. And this is on Asakawa's final, you know, seventh day. They're really pushing it. The sun is going down. I think she has till about 7.10 until she's supposed to pass away, you know, from the curse. And uh, they wind up uncovering Sadako's uh, skeletal remains. And uh, they believe, oh, the curse is broken. And uh, they all go home. Ryuji has a, a deadline that he's trying to meet with, uh, like an academic paper, I believe, that he's writing. And so he's back at his place, working on that, and it's his final day. And then the TV behind him turns on. And he looks, and of course the image is the well. And Sadako is climbing out of the well, and she comes out of the TV, and, uh, you know, terrifies him to death. As, as we all know that she does. Um, and then that leads Asakawa to realize that, you know, it wasn't finding Sadako's remains that saved her. It was the fact that she had made a copy of the tape and showed it to Ryuji. Because the only way to break the curse is to pass the curse on to somebody else. And of course her son character, uh, Yoichi, he watched the tape as well and so we kind of end the film. She's, she's going to pick him up and knows that, you know, she has to have him make a copy of this tape and show it to someone else. So you have to basically propagate this curse in order to uh, to break it for yourself. Uh, so kind of a bleak ending there. Uh, so yeah, that's the basic story of Ringu. Um, so my thoughts on this film, uh, to be totally honest, I found it a little bit underwhelming. Um, compared to some of the other J-horror films I've seen, like uh, Cairo or Pulse, or Juon, which is the Japanese version of The Grudge. I felt like this movie just didn't have that pervasive sense of dread all throughout that I'm sort of used to uh, with those movies. It definitely has its moments, and it's obviously the really influential J-horror film, um, you know. But it's a little bit more focused on the mystery behind the tape, and so there's definitely some really good horror moments in it. But they're pretty sparse, and it's not really until the end that we get the really scary, you know, well scene. So, um, yeah, for most of the film, it's it's not super... It just doesn't really have a ton of scariness to it. Um, it's still, still a good movie. I mean, it's a Japanese film, uh, so definitely a lower budget compared to what we're used to here in the States. Um, I don't want to go a ton into comparisons between the Japanese version and the American version, but I will do a little bit here. Um, just because the American version of The Ring was a really important film for me as a horror fan in my early days. Um, you know, you don't get the same sort of coldness from the color grading in this film. It's a bit more of a standard sort of a look to it. Whereas the American version is basically, you know, bluish turquoise all throughout the whole film. It has this very cold feeling to it. Um, the, the actual tape sequence in Ringu is much shorter and, um, not nearly as unsettling. The, uh, the tape sequence in the American film is about two minutes long, I'd say. And there's a lot of unsettling imagery in it, you know. Oh. Uh, like, there's a part where somebody pushes their finger onto a nail that always just, like, gets ya. Um, there's a sequence where they have a bunch of, uh, maggots, kind of you know, being all squirmy, and then it, it transitions immediately to a scene of, like, a bunch of humans that sort of take on the same form as the maggots, which is a pretty interesting cut. Um, you have the woman jumping over the cliffside, all these different things, and then, 
the American film kind of plays on these ideas more visually, I'd say. You get a little bit of it here, like there's the mirror in the in the film, you know, that we see where there's the woman on one side and then it moves quickly over to Sonico and then back over. Um, you know, they go to the house and they see that mirror. Um, stuff like that. But in the American film, like, all throughout the movie, she's finding these sort of parallels between places she's going and things that you see in the film. You don't get as much of that interplay in the Japanese version. Um, however, I will say the, the sequence of Sonico actually coming out of the TV, I think that it's a bit creepier in this. Um, in the American version, it definitely feels more like an American horror film, more, uh, I don't know, more like it's trying a bit too hard. I think part of what makes the creepy parts of this movie so effective is just how the subtlety of it. Um, but, you know, when you see her coming out of the well and walking, you know, she has those really creepy movements, very unnatural, very much like somebody who's been stuck in a well and, you know, doesn't have full uh, control over their body anymore. Um, you see the fingernails, because that's kind of a, a big thing when they're inside the well, they see her fingernails stuck in, in, the, in the stones of the well because she was trying to climb her way out of there because she was still alive for, you know, seven days or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it could have been scarier, uh, for sure, but not a bad film. Um, I think it's well made. Um, I will say, I think the music was really good in this movie. Uh, there's a lot of really, it's pretty sparse, but, um, sort of dark ambient, um, music, very ominous and haunting, some nice string works, uh, a mix of strings and electronics that, that has a really nice, uh, balance there. Um, so I thought the music was really good, and the sound design as well, like, there's a part where, um, they show sort of the distorted photographs. That's a motif that they use in the American film as well, but when, you know, after you've watched the curse tape and somebody takes your picture, uh, your face is all distorted and contorted and doesn't look right, and they do some really nice, like, heavy sound design when they're showing that image that just, like, really drives it home, or like the uh, sort of metallic screeching sound that we hear when Sadako's coming out of the well or over the phone, which I think is supposed to be like fingernails on a chalkboard, <laughs> kind of, you know, since to, because she's trying to climb out. Um, that was a really effective piece of sound design as well. Um, so yeah, overall it's, it's definitely uh, worth a viewing. Uh, if you're a fan of The Ring, I think, you know, you owe it to yourself to check out the original and see kind of the film that inspired. Uh, the American version of The Ring, and just as a, as a piece of uh, horror, you know, this is a piece of horror history, it's an iconic horror film. Uh, Ringu uh, had a big effect on J-horror and sort of spawning all of that, as well as, you know, the importing of J-horror films into America. So, it's a landmark film, for sure. Um, if you've seen this film before, go ahead and let me know what you think in the comments, I'd love to hear your opinions on this. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you'd like to see more comment content like this in the future, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Like I said, I'm going to be reviewing a different horror movie for every day of the rest of the month, and I've still got a lot of great films left on my list to go over, so you won't want to miss out on that. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will catch you next time.